Our next speaker is Phil Nash, developer evangelist for Twilio and a Google developer expert living in Melbourne, Australia. His talk is on better API dev experience with CLI, command line interface. Hello, Phil, how are you doing? Hey. Hi, Zavia, I'm very good, thank you, yes. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, great to have you here, and it's a very interesting topic, and I'm keen to listen more. I'm no glad, more. I'm excited to talk about it, yeah. Wonderful, looks like you're ready. I'm ready. Stage to is yours. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, and yes, oh, well, Sethi has uh, gone and uh, uh, done a bunch of my uh, abbreviations here already, but uh, I'm excited to talk about, yeah, better APIs, uh, better API DX uh, with a CLI. Um, so my name is Vanash. I'm a developer evangelist at Twilio. Uh, Twilio, if you don't know, is, uh, an, app, is, a, is an API for communications. Uh, that is, uh, you can, if you can think of a way to communicate with a user in your application via voice, messaging, email, anything, video, uh, Twilio probably has an API for you. Um, uh, if you ever have any questions, either about the, the rest of the talk today or indeed about Twilio in general, you can always find me on the internet, uh, either as Phil Nash pretty much all over the place or just drop me an email, uh, philnash at twilio.com. I'm always happy to talk APIs with you. Um, I also am happy to talk with you in this session as well. This is a, this is a live session, so uh, I'm keeping an eye on the chat, and I'd love to, uh, if you have comments, if you have questions as we go along throughout the talk, please, please pop it in the chat. Even just pop in a quick hello, just to, just to show you're there. Uh, I, I, I like to see a chat that's, uh, that's active. Um, so anyway, let's carry on uh, and talk about better, uh, better API DX with the CLI. Uh, we kind of covered the, the um, uh, abbreviations there. So obviously API is, we know that one, we're at API days, but uh, I'm talking a little about a developer experience and command line interfaces. Um, and developer experience, I think is the important part. And in fact, it, we are talking about that. This is the section of API days. We're talking about developer experience. Uh, and and uh, CLIs are a very small part of developer experience. It's, it's that whole thing, everything from the way that your uh, API is designed. And actually, in fact, a lot of the things that uh, kind of Rose has just covered in the in the last session, the way you've designed it, the documentation you have for it, uh, helper libraries that you might have created for it, everything about uh, the developer experience uh, with an API, whether it's an internal one or an external one, uh, and, and you know, I, working at Twilio, I'm absolutely kind of working with that API that we are using as a product, so it's an external one. It's hugely important if you want to gain adoption for those APIs, that your developer experience is good. Otherwise, you are gonna turn off developers and they will find another tool, they will find something else to use. Um, and hello to Priscilla, thank you for giving us a wave in the chat there. Um, so that developer experience has, has many, many, many facets. Uh, and we are lucky at Twilio, we're lucky enough at Twilio, given that we've been building our APIs for a long time to have put a whole bunch of these things in place and productized and, and made a, a big thing out of uh, our documentation and helper libraries and all sorts of things like that. Uh, and so that's why um, when it came to a few years ago, we we're thinking like, what else can we do? What else can we be doing to make using the API uh, better? And, uh, and this actually came out of our documentation team where they uh, they thought that a, a CLI would be a good uh, you know a good way to improve the experience uh, of the uh, of the API for developers and there are a couple of hypotheses around this um, and we we did build this it exists um, you can install it and it's Twilio on the command line like I have it uh, here in front of us ready to to play with oops not Twilio nine Twilio right it's it's right there it's uh, it's on my command line and uh, and it can do a bunch of stuff and we'll see what it can do in a bit. Um, but we had a, yeah, a, uh, we built it out of, um, JavaScript. It's a Node.js project. Um, and I'm not going to go too much into the kind of this implementation detail, but I think it's important to, uh, mention that it's built out of Node.js. It's using Oakliff, which is a framework that, uh, was built originally by Heroku for their, uh, command line interface, uh, which has been around for a long time as well. So it's a battle tested framework that gave us a whole bunch of other stuff. And then it's installed with, at the moment, it's installed either via NPM or via Homebrew uh, if you're on a Mac. Um, now, we uh, we picked JavaScript uh, because that allowed us to um, not only uh, build a product that, um, it allowed us to, to use our existing skills 
uh, that are pretty much around the entire of Twilio uh, to, to build. Like JavaScript is everywhere. Uh, and Node.js allowed uh, people to um, have input and be able to uh, change things in the, uh, in the, in the CLI. Um, much easier. So JavaScript is that kind of thing. It does kind of have the drawback that right now in, uh, installation is only via npm and brew, but we are uh, looking into uh, other packaging man methods uh, to get it out to uh, to systems without necessarily having to install Node.js. Um, so we had some hypotheses about this. We needed to you know think about the audience for this as well. Like we are talking about developer experience. And so hopefully we can talk about developers. And notably, not everyone, in fact, not every developer will want to use a CLI. And even though I have the Toyo CLI to hand uh, a lot of the time, I certainly still find myself going to the uh, Toyo console to do things as well and do it with a GUI. Um, so uh, having a CLI is not you know, the, the end of everything for people. Uh, it is just another option. Um, and it certainly allows me to do things a lot quicker when I know that there's a command to, to do something and I can just reach straight for it. <laughs> now, our hypothesis was indeed that developers prefer the command line to a GUI console, uh, you know, and that's particularly important for people who uh, you know, don't want to leave the keyboard in order to, to do things, particularly within their Twilio account in this case. Uh, and the other hypothesis was that developers love to be able to automate Twilio actions. Uh, and this goes into kind of uh, building uh, automating actions within the Twilio API that you might need to do as part of your kind of DevOps pipeline and things like that, like uh, building out uh, resources uh, as part of a deployment process or testing process and things like that. So um, we looked into that as well. So these two process, these two hypotheses drove what we tried to create as, uh, as um, our kind of experience on the command line. So, what I want to talk about is how we can make a great uh, developer experience. And uh, you know, not all CLIs are created equal. Um, but I think uh, uh, for me, there was kind of three questions that uh, we faced uh, when building the CLI and that we tried to answer in order to make this uh, experience the best one we could. So the first one was, you know, what's the minimum a CLI can do for an API to be useful? Secondly, as like, what can you then add to that CLI? What extra features can we add in uh, in the in the installation of the CLI to make a better experience? And then finally, uh, and almost most importantly, I think to me uh, is what can your users add to the CLI as well? Like, what else can there be? Um, how can we open this up for other user interaction? Um, maybe that's uh, that's important to me because I, you know I know we have a, a whole bunch of users. If you're a, if you're building a new API, then perhaps the top two are the most important to start with. Um, so let's see what that means. Uh, the most viable CLI, the uh, the product that I think you can get away with uh, that still helps, it still improves the experience, but is kind of the the base uh, table stakes for uh, for a CLI. Uh, I think it's made up of. Um, three things again, funnily enough. Uh, first up, you need the commands for your API endpoints. That one seems like a no-brainer, uh, but um, it's it's crucially important, right? You don't want to be missing bits of the API. Uh, it's very much like if you built a helper library as well that 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 accesses a, uh, the API. You don't want to be missing chunks of it. Now, this is really um, this can be quite. I don't want to say simple to do. This this can be relatively straightforward to do if you have a decent API spec, uh, and you know there are there are generators out there that can take, for example, an open API spec and generate a CLI for you uh, that covers all the endpoints that are in your spec, and that's really useful. Um, but that leads us to the second part, which is the documentation for it. Um, all of those endpoints, I think, need to be documented uh, so that people know how to use it. You know, we're trying to keep. Uh, when you're using the CLI, you want to be stuck on the terminal, on the command line, uh, without having to go visit documentation in other parts. Uh, and so building documentation uh, into it is very important. And I think I said, you, you can generate these, uh, hopefully from your spec. Uh, we've been able to, from, from the specs that we have, uh, including OP API specs that we now have uh, at Twilio, uh, and it makes for that kind of base implementation of the whole API, which at Twilio these days is, is hundreds of endpoints, um, uh, as well as documenting it, because our documentation lives within our API definitions as well. Uh, at least the documentation for the endpoints and the parameters they take. Um, so once you've got those two, I think there's one other important thing. Um, 
which is kind of credential storage and being able to use uh, a, a profile or a login. Uh, that's important because you don't want to have to make your uh, users of your CLI kind of add a a token or a or a, uh, we have API we have account SIDs and auth tokens. Uh, you don't need to add flags for that every single time. So being able to kind of store credentials and then use that uh, in terms of a profile is uh, is super important. Uh, and so we do have, um, I say we do have that, all that stuff uh, within uh, the Twilio CLI. Um, you can see that this is our documentation, at least the top level. Uh, and if I go to kind of API um, core messages, say uh, list and hit help on that, right, this is listing SMS messages and it has all of the parameters you can add, uh, information about how to you add to them, uh, as well as uh, uh, you know, a little bit of documentation there. Uh, so that's really useful. And then we also have um, uh, like profiles. Uh, so I can list out some profiles. Um, you can see I've got a bunch of profiles that actually I have saved in my account. And, uh, and these are the things that I'm using right now. Uh, and I have my default one, which is active. Uh, so being able to do that, super important. Uh, I don't have to think about my credentials when I'm now making extra API calls. So let's talk about the next level of things. How do we how do we improve the built-in experience? What can we bring to the table out of the box? Um, and I want to, uh, I think, start this because uh, Twilio uh, API is a is a is a huge call. Um, if I open up Twilio API and then kind of hit Tab again, this is what I mean. Like within the API, we have eleven hundred and twenty possible uh, lines there, and uh, and that's that's way too much. So we need to improve the experience in, in some respects for this. Uh, and that first line is, uh, is of course, having that help, um, which shows you the, the things we can do. Uh, and if I were to run Twilio help, we can actually see a bunch of the commands that we have at the top there. So the API is the first one, but then the rest of them uh, become the extra added things that we've got inside of this CLI. And I wanna walk you through just a couple of them to, to show you what I mean by that, uh, in fact, yeah, that's the end screen for this. So if I look at uh, this help, uh, we can see, um, first up, yeah, autocomplete is a great command. Um, uh, if we have autocomplete, I, you can see I already have it involved, but Twilio autocomplete is a command that then shows you how to install autocomplete for this. So this comes along with having all those API endpoints, uh, being able to autocomplete it allows for um, uh, discoverability amongst the API, but also just that ability to type things uh, without having to, uh, to to know exactly where you're going. Uh, every time I use, for example, the Twilio uh, serverless API, um, I can I get API serverless, hit tab, and it gives me not just through the V1 section, but into services, and then I can list my services. Um, I don't know if you need to know what services I have there, but there we go. Um, so autocomplete, super important, just for that discoverability of things. Uh, now let's see what I've got up next. Um, the, we now have this difference between topics and commands, and these commands certainly help us out. I like the feedback command as well, um, because when you are building a product, whatever that product is, uh, feedback is absolutely key to improving it and making it better. Uh, and so uh, very much from the start, uh, the team that built this in the first place. I wasn't part of the team that built this in the first place, though I do work with it a lot. Um, built in a feedback uh, command, and that all that does is send a link, uh, send out a link to a form which you can fill in feedback from. But without that feedback, uh, you can't necessarily know if people are enjoying using this product, using this tool. Uh, so, um, including feedback, super important. Uh, if I hit up help again, we can see what we've got here. So um, I like feedback, that's great. Uh, I wanted to see adding in extra APIs is always an important thing as well. Uh, and so when I say that we have generated all of our API endpoints from our uh, from our specs, uh, that is sort of true, um, but there are other parts of the company uh, that uh, are not necessarily part of those specs just yet. Uh, and uh, just a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago, so now, uh, Twilio bought SendGrid for email, and so there is the uh, Twilio email command now, allowing you to just hook into and send uh, emails using SendGrid. So uh, adding in those extra features, extra uh, parts of the API is, is all very useful. Um, bring up the help section again, and 
this is the, the I think the coolest thing for me is the phone number section. So we have, uh, you know, under Twilio API, we'll be able to access all the phone number endpoints. And that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, but phone numbers are actually a little bit more difficult uh, have like a flow, an actual process to go through. Uh, particularly when you're buying a new phone number, you have to search for them. Then you have to make a post to uh, to, to to actually buy it. So it's a two stage process. Uh, and knowing all the flags and putting that all together is not necessarily uh, a fun experience. Uh, so rather than go under the API core phone numbers APIs that we have, um, the API, uh, so the CLI here, uh, we added the um, Twilio phone numbers section. Hello, behave yourself. Phone numbers, and so we can uh, kind of we can list our existing phone numbers. These are all the ones that I have in my account. It's quite a few of them, um, but we can also do things like buy a local number. Uh, so we can go into buy uh, a local number, and I have to give the country code. And I'll, let's say Australia for now. Uh, it's not. <laughs> this is where I need the help. It might be country code. Uh, it's always the case. Um, there's a whole bunch, like I said, get all that documentation in there. Uh, it is country code, I knew it. Uh, that's, that's, that's not sensitive. Let's look at the US and the area code 415. Uh, so the experience here is not just, here's a bunch of phone numbers that you could buy, but when I actually um, uh, choose a number here, uh, and press enter, we can actually go ahead and purchase the phone number, make the second API request. Uh, and so I'm not going to do that for right now, but uh, making a flow like that, a, an API story that takes that needs two endpoints um, in a row, uh, a part of an experience like this is much better. Uh, and then there's a, there's one other thing I think I wanted to, to mention. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just list my phone numbers for a second grab a phone number and then uh, show you a very, uh, I think my favorite uh, part of it, uh, which is to go um, Toyo phone numbers update. And if we set the uh, the voice URL, for example, to uh, something on local host, say HTTP local, local host 3000, which is where I normally put my uh, things. Uh, we need the phone number as well, of course. Um, that was the phone number. So we're looking to update this phone number and give it a voice URL of a local, uh, locally run application. And what this actually does is um, discovers that you want localhost uh, and then turns that into a tunnel using the ngrok service. Uh, and so now, not only has this updated my phone number and its webhook uh, to point to the ngrok uh, URL, that ngrok URL is then pointing at that localhost URL. Uh, and so um, being able to test a phone number locally uh, from uh, from Twilio uh, using a webhook uh, is all one command uh, using the CLI. So we added some little extra bits there, and I think that's really useful. So those shortcuts, but also um, extra features um, for those specific APIs. Uh, so that's where I got there. We got autocomplete. We've got shortcuts to things like the phone numbers list, uh, extra APIs like adding uh, email into ours, for example, being able to send user feedback, and then extra capabilities uh, like like tunneling through a webhook uh, for specific APIs. These are all things you can add. These are just ideas and things that we've added as part of the Twilio uh, CLI, but ideas that you could use if you were building your own. And then finally, um, the question is who else can contribute to this experience? Um, because providing a CLI uh, and and you know the, all the things we've seen so far is great, but um, once you have that, you can actually um, open up a whole bunch of other opportunities. And that leads us to uh, plugins. Uh, it's one of the reasons, uh, one of the best reasons, I think, that we uh, we used Oakliff, that, uh, that Heroku-based um, written framework for building the CLI, because Oakliff has plugins uh, as a, uh, funnily enough, a plugin to Oakliff is the plugins plugin. Allows you to include plugins in your own CLI. And that then allows people to um, put in, uh, I'll get back to that in a minute, put in their own um, uh, uh, their own behavior, their own features. Uh, and so um, if I look at Julia plugins, I might have to, I have uh, three of them installed right now, um, but I actually, there's a, there's a plugins available, which lists out a few of the other ones I have available to me as well. Um, but once you have a plugin, uh, 
if I, I'm going to run the help command again, I can point out that what a plugin does is allow you to add an extra topic, an extra service to this existing thing. And so the plugins I have, we've got serverless, uh, token is a plugin, uh, flex is a plugin here. Uh, and the thing I actually work on most uh, at Toyo myself is the serverless plugin. Uh, and so we have a, a serverless um, kind of functions and assets uh, solution within Twilio to make it slightly easier to kind of develop and deploy uh, webhook-based things. And um, that has an API to do development uh, on it. And, uh, you know, within the Twilio API, there is a serverless uh, bunch of stuff and there's lots to it. You have to build, create functions and assets and builds and environments and all sorts of stuff. Uh, but if you just want to build a project and then deploy it, uh, you don't want to have to go through calling all of those uh, API methods yourself. And so we built the Twilio serverless plugin to give you a bunch of commands like deploy a thing, uh, initialize a new project, which is going to create a whole project for you and scaffold it for you, uh, and then do all the things that, um, that you want uh, with that. Uh, building these plugins has allowed um, us to build even more of those features, a bit like the, the phone number uh, topic, the phone number command, uh, that gives you shortcuts and, and better ways to do this, but without it having to be on the uh, Twilio CLI core team to have to write and maintain all of these things. Uh, and so, um, and this is what, one of the other things I'm happy about it being JavaScript is because that's my one of my languages of choice as well. So um, uh, being able to uh, submit uh, plugins like this, and serverless is not the only one I've written. I've written another one as well for, uh, I think we had uh, assets in there as well. That's another... <laughs> A relatively new one in which uh, just this is it, just an even simpler uh, look on the uh, assets uh, API that we have uh, as part of the service API. Uh, and so giving your users the ability to add their own plugins is wonderful. When you have a plugin, it's a command that also has then access to all the other bits of the CLI as well. So it has access to that profile, has access to the credentials, and can make API requests and things like that. So that's really useful. And uh, I just learned today uh, that we're not the only people that think this. And, uh, and I believe it was yesterday, uh, GitHub announced their, their version 2.0 of their CLI, which uh, the headline says uh, GitHub 2.0 includes extensions. Uh, so you can go write your own GitHub uh, CLI extensions as well as Twilio CLI extensions if you're at all interested. Um, I see Zathia's back. I'm just wrapping up right now. Uh, to remind you that those kind of three questions that I uh, asked at the start, like what is good for building a CLI for that for that experience. You know, what is the minimum we can do to be useful? What can we add to the CLI as a core team building it to build a better experience for the API? And then what can we add? What can our users add to it? Uh, if you put those things together, I think you do end up with a great developer experience. Um, there's a couple of links. I will share those in the chat uh, once I'm done with this. Um, and uh, just a call, you know, if you want to go and build great APIs, give developers great experiences with them, build great CLIs with that too. Uh, thank you very much. Again, my name is Von Ash. Uh, I, I'm a developer evangelist at Twilio, and I would love if you, uh, if you, if you, uh, I would love to hear about your CLIs and uh, and and see them in action too. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thanks very much, Phil really an engaging presentation and a demo so wonderful um yeah so uh, just uh, we'll just leave with one question so how successful was your two hypothesis how did you test the adoption of cli apis and what key feedbacks you got that's a very good question um so uh as not actually a member of the um the cli team myself i'm not 100 percent sure on all of the uh, actual <laughs> stats for it uh, although uh, I can definitely see that it is, uh, it is, it continues to rise in popularity on kind of npm downloads. So the CLI itself has been a, uh, uh, a benefit. Um, I do work on that serverless plugin that I mentioned at the end, and that one is very specifically um, used as part of deployment uh, pipelines and things like that. And so uh, I do know that we do have a number of uh, number of customers who are using it. I know this because I, like, I'm on the developer evangelism team. I'm not on the support team. I'm not on the product team. But I've ended up supporting uh, a product that I accidentally wrote. Uh, so <laughs> um, it's definitely there. And it's uh, it's become critical to uh, the deployment process of a, of a number of our customers. And and it, that excites me. Uh, it also scares me slightly because uh, you know it's, it's just a, an open source tool that we built. But uh, 
uh, it is being there, uh, being used in in those production environments, and uh, and I'm delighted by that. So I think the hypothesis have been correct, uh, and I think that um, uh, and and I think those you know the answers to those three questions are also correct. We're within Twilio, we have actually still uh, within parts of Twilio, like we've been the ones writing most of the plugins that go to the CLI because they have actually been useful to us as well, uh, yeah. but. Um, we found that uh, at least one of them, uh, one of our most popular plugins was written by uh, by a third party, by one of our customers, and just uh, you know, um, open source and uh, and give, made available to the community, which is just wonderful from them. But also, it was a a really it was a very good uh, version of a, a plugin. Again, they um, it was for our autopilot service, which is our kind of machine learning um, uh, conversation platform. Uh, and uh, and what they managed to produce uh, for that was was better than we did ourselves. So delighted by that kind of uh, um, interaction there. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Phil. I think we uh, we are running out of time. So um, for everyone uh, from the audience, feel free to follow Phil on Twitter and also follow his blog on philna.sh website. So thank you so much, Phil. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference.